How's it going, everybody? This is Ray with the Houston Film Fanatics, Sunny 99.1, and I am here talking about a show that I got to see last night, and it is going to blow your mind. If you haven't had a chance to see Dear Evan Hansen, get yourself to the Hobby Center and check it out. You will not be disappointed. I am here with a very, very talented cast member from the show. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, first off, can you go ahead and introduce your role in the show? And for the people that may not be familiar, just like a brief summary of what the show was about. So I play Zoe Murphy in the show. Um, without giving too much away, the show is sort of about a boy who tells a lie to help a grieving family, that being my family. Um, and I just also happen to be the sort of love interest of this boy named Evan Hansen. Um, and really it's just a show about, at the end of the day, about human connection and the way that we live life, which is very vague, but I don't want to say too much. That's okay. I, I do, I think it is probably the best to see this show not knowing much about it, because I didn't really know a whole lot. I knew it was about a kid that had anxiety and wanted to fit in, but then you go and see it and it's a whole, there's a whole big story way behind that. Yeah, I'm there's kidding. so, there's so much more to it than that. Well, I mean, okay, so one of the things that I like is the realism with the characters and the story and the situations, um, particularly because it's not like a, a beaver cleaver kind of, you know, families. You see families that are struggling with issues. You see, you know, kids obviously struggling to fit in with social media always being in their face. Um, how do you feel about the way the story approaches each of these characters and their, and their issues? That's what I love about this story. It's so raw and real and intimate and all the characters have flaws and you see their flaws and I think that's what is so resonant with people. They can really, everyone can see themselves in at least one of the characters on stage, I think. And uh, it, it's just, it's really special in that sense that um, I think everybody can connect with, with the story. All right, I've got to say that there is a slight spoiler here, but I have to ask this question because I was thinking it last night while I was watching the show. Oh, yeah. All right, there's a song that you sing, uh, Requiem. Requiem, yeah. Requiem. I swear I can say that right. Um, but in that song, you've got your family, and they are dealing with the loss of a loved one. And it's kind of three different takes on how they're dealing with their mourning. And you've got you know, the mom who's just, she's lost. She misses her son. You've got the dad who's angry. But then your character I found to be the most interesting. Because it's like you were sad, but it was almost like you were, I don't know, vaguely relieved in a weird way. Do you feel like that's true at all, like with your approach to this character? Especially when you start hearing some of the backstory. Yeah, I think at first Zoe sort of denies, we can, we can say her brother dies, we can say that. It happens very early in the show. So she, um, she sort of is in denial about it, I think at first, and she's sort of going through the grieving process and she sort of spent her whole life in the shadows and there's always a lot of attention on Connor. So I think um, sh she hears stories from other people that maybe don't tie up with the way that she saw her brother. Um, but then hearing these stories sort of makes her second guess the way that their relationship was. And I think she's just dealing with a lot at once. And uh, I, think, I think at the end of the song, she realizes, oh, maybe I do, maybe I didn't know him the way that I thought I did. And maybe he, he wasn't this horrible, mean brother. Um, so she's sort of, it's, it's a whirlwind for her, for sure. <laughs> Now, before you got to take part in the show, had you seen the show previously? Like I hadn't, no. I, uh, I listened to the soundtrack, or the cast recording, but I hadn't seen it. So when you finally got a chance to actually see the play, what, what was your response to it? Like, seeing it live? Because, I mean, it, I've been up all night thinking about this and trying to decide how to approach this because there's a lot of great things in this show. There's a lot that it's going to leave you to think about. What was your reaction after finally seeing it for the first time? I, I was so excited. I had listened to that cast recording thousands and thousands, thousands of times. Um, and it's really interesting to, to hear the songs, but then to see the way that it plays out on stage is so different. Um, and I think it's such a cathartic experience for everyone. Definitely lots of tears, but also, also lots of laughs. There's a lot of funny little moments in the show. So it's, uh, I'm just so proud to be part of it. Um, and the other thing I was thinking, I wish, you know, I'm thinking back when I was in high school, you know, we had like after school specials and things that dealt with like this kind of stuff. But I wish we'd had shows like this one that kind of gave you, I mean, I don't want to like say that it's kind of a cool show. I mean, it's, it is a cool show, but it's like the subject matter is so heavy. It's weird calling it that. Do you kind of wish that like growing up there was more stuff like this available for kids to see as like an outlet? I absolutely think so. Uh, I think everybody should be seeing this show. I think it's really, it's really important because it's, uh, it's opening up conversation for mental health and all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm really pr proud to be a part of something that is starting that conversation and erasing stigma. 
because we do see characters on stage that are dealing with you know anxiety and, and different things like that and uh, there's a song in the show called you will be found um, and I think it's just an anthem for, for people that maybe feel alone in their struggles to know that there are other people going through you know those issues too and we can all sort of band together and, and figure it out um, and my last question is one of the things that I was thinking about while I was watching the show is, you know, you have all of these different things happening, and as you said, the show was set around a lie um, that kind of opens up this whole can of worms with everything. I was watching the show, and in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I watch a lot of MTV Catfish. And so I'm like, you know, I, part of me wonders, would it have been the same story if the person behind the lie would have, I guess, I feel like they kind of got off a little bit easier for some people. They think that maybe there should have been a more severe like reaction to it. But I mean, it does leave you with an, with an uplifting response to the show. Do you feel like maybe it would have been an entirely different play had it ended a harsher way? I think so. I think what's nice about that, though, is um, you know the lie did some you know crazy things, but at the end of the day, it helped some people, um, and that was sort of the intention behind it. So uh, I think it would be a different story, but I think what's nice about that is that it, it is uplifting for people watching it as well, so they can sort of go home feeling like, okay, it's not so bad. Everybody figured it out, and we're okay. Well, like I said, phenomenal show. I can't say enough great things about this show, guys. Dear Evan Hansen, it's here in Houston, and I believe it's here in Houston for the very first time. So if you haven't had a chance to see this show, Broadway is here at your doorstep. Uh, you can see the show now, and it's playing through November the 24th at the Hobby Center. Tickets are available at broadwayatthehobbycenter.com. Stephanie, you are amazing. Thank you so, so much for talking Thank with us. Thank you so much. Well, we'll catch you guys next time. This has been Ray, Houston Film Fanatics, Sunny 99.1, and we'll see you guys real soon.